your poem predecessor. Predecessor? I think it would probably be his father. But my grandfather died long before he died of cancer, long before I was born. But he'd been the blacksmith there as well. Yes, my grandfather, yes, he was a blacksmith. And my father did take on an apprentice. He had a German called Lionel who worked with him for a long, long time. And I think that the man who brought it from my father, then, or brought it from my mother, I'm sure he carried on the business for, for some time. I don't know whether he did shoeing and things like that, because, of course, my father specialised in... Well, it wasn't shoeing. No, no, I mean... But, um, you know, my father awesome. would have the cart horses in, and, uh, you know, very early in the morning. My mother never really, she never really accepted that he was safe out there. You know, he'd be tucked in between two giant horse horses because they would come in about five in the morning, mm. five thirty, to be shod. And of course, it was all hand, mm. all hand shod and handmade shoes in those days. And then, of course, he did do a lot of horses for uh, people who lived in the district. And also, Miss Saunders had a riding school here. I was going to say, and I was bad at riding, so I got some free rides. <laughs> so I used to muck out on my way home from high school because you could cut down through from the mm. station. You know, mm. down that well, how about the um, race horses? Did he have anything to do with no, it? No, nothing to do with race horses. Just the local, yes, the local horses. horses. Mm -hmm. And also, he also would, was like a wheelwright in the fact that every so often, where um, Kathleen and her husband have now got their garden that comes right along to yeah. the wall, right on the corner of that wall, there was a fruit shop. Um, it had been a, well, it was a fruit shop belonging to one of the Lydia family who lived in one of those little houses, the very end house, mm -hmm. which is what your your piece yes, of garden is. now. And um, before that, it had been a general photo shop. But it's been all sorts of things, and that was just on the edge of Borden Carriage. Oh, and really? of course, down at the end of Borden Carriage, where there's a very nice house now, there was some little old cottages, and I think a family called Hibbards lived in them. What's and, the origin of the name Borden? I don't know. I, I really don't no, know. It's, not, it's it, always no. been called Borden Carriage as it's long right, as... No, it's because it, you've no other name I wonder back. if it was any link to the station, because it was a back way into the station. Mm, you know, a carriageway or... It's one of those names where we've often, you know, we've often queer in ourselves. Because I, I did a detour around there. That, when this friend was home last year, I said, oh, come on, let's have a walk. So we came off the common, popped the dog in the car, and we walked down and across the canal and along, because you used to be able to get into our garden, because, of course, we had a ginormous garden, and we also owned the it? field, which, obviously, the fishermen fished in, mm. and we could walk, if we came along to where that house is now built in Borden Carriage, we could turn right in there and go along and across a little bridge, and we'd be into my father's field. Now, we kept pigs in there, I had a swing and sea sort of things, and we kept chicken, and we kept pigs during the war. And the tree that was on the corner, I used to sit up and do my homework, and I believe that's still there, because when those houses were being built, I did go down and have a nose, and I could see that the stream where we used to get watercress from had obviously been cleaned up, but it is part of the, the sort of the garden, garden network. Is, mm, yes. So you see, that was a very big... And we could also walk into the back of houses like... Um, well, it's now Sterling's, but it was Beard's. Now, Ada and Janet Beard were up here yesterday, but that house that's now Sterling's and it's up for uh, development and yeah. renovation now was a coal yard, you see, because um, Lou Beard had a coal merchants. And um, he worked in the post office. He went to the post office for a year, but he had a coal merchant business, which was run from that cobbled yard at the back. And now Mrs. Beard, who will obviously tell you more about that, lives at Renrock in um, Macklin Close which is on the site of Macklin's, the old dairy. Oh, so obviously, you know, I'm sure they were. Yes. yes, of course. Mm. And so Beard. it was a very busy area, wasn't it? Like oh, that? yes, it was. Mm. You know, a different busy area to yes, it is today, well, because yeah. obviously um, now we've got so many antique shops everywhere. I mean, yes. it brings the, the grockles, as everybody <laughs> calls them, in on a Sunday. In fact, I'm horrified when I go down to town on a Sunday. I can't wait to come back up here. I know, it is. I was going to ask you the about the, how the nature of the town has changed, obviously. Oh, yes. You, you're coming back after Quite, all. quite different. Um, not different in, in looks. I mean, you no. can stand on the... Um, you can stand on the bridge and you can see the clock and you can see the river. You see the, the canal. The canal's developed, of course. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... Can, the canal walk is lovely. I've just had a good look at canal walk this year because I've just done the census. And I, that was where my census started in canal walk. And 
and I've talked to lots of people in there because the people who lived in what was Wooldridge's yard, um, that's the the granary, the, the, oh, yes. the big house, yes. you know, big that's made into yes. two. And um, although um, one of the ladies wasn't very easy, the gentleman and lady who lived next door, you know, were very chatty about it. Mm. You know, I said to them, my father used to get all used to do all sorts of work on Wooldridge's and get lots of materials from over there, you mm. know, and it was a sort of a just a pathway across. Mm. And uh, obviously that was just a yard down there. I mean now it's a very, very nice development like Bearwater's, you know, yes, Bearwater's well, yes. yard. Yes. That yes. was, yes, and that was uh, Bennett's yard and of course um, Pat Bennett and Roy Bennett were school friends, you know, my age group. What and, did uh, they they were Well they ancient. were um no, it was I suppose it was like agricultural, I suppose you'd call them, yes, um, not so much the seed merchants because they brought a shop up into Hungerford, which yeah, is now a flash up machine, machine yeah, yeah. yes, but a lot of garden machinery mm -hmm. as well as uh, agricultural machinery. And I think he then went out of more out of agricultural and went into more of the garden and then eventually came down to a little garden shop up here in, in the high street, which is now a garden shop now with a very nice Give shop next door to it. That's the one by the station, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. We keep them uncovering. David King wrote sort of the bare water as a mountain. And he uncovered some big concrete slab a year or two ago. And I said to him, what do you think that slab is there for Mr. King? Well, I think he must have been a privy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> yes. Now, would that be a king of the King family that are farmed around the area? Because there is a Mr. King who lives along... Um, uh, just off Eddington in a very nice bungalow. Now I know he has two unmarried sons. I was wondering if it's one of one of those. They're very keen on their garden. His um, his wife. Um, I, was all to I think his wife was a an Eatwell or was a sister of whom Eatwell. No, I don't know. I mean, there were kings in the district that were farmers, obviously, mm. and I think we knew obviously because of farming. Obviously, had connections in in that. Uh, yeah. 